Hi, this is Mark from Skywagons University doing another video on some model year changes and we're going to do some papers. So that is what? A Turkey 140, a Warrior, a 160, a 161, a 151. We'll go over the details of all of those. That's actually a Warrior. And then over there, there's another Piper. What is that? A 180, a Dakota, a Pathfinder, an Archer? We'll go over all the details of that too. But just as a quick instance of my name, Skywagons, there they are. So I really do still have some. But let's talk about these Pipers. Okay, so this is actually a 1976 Piper Warrior. So the Warrior is a PA-28 151, or the Mark II is the PA-28 161. The number is horsepower. So there's a Cherokee 140, 150, 160, 180, 235, and then you add a 1 to all of those. 151, 161, 181, 236. The 1 means it's got the longer fuselage with the third window and the tapered wing. So the wing isn't square. And the square wing is called the Hershey bar wing. And if anybody who isn't from America is wondering what a Hershey bar is, it's a delicious chocolate confection, very blocky, rectangular. So the pre-tapered wing planes didn't have the one on them. They were like Turkey 140, 160, 180, 235, like this plane. So this plane has the, the square Hershey bar wing. It's parallel sided from the taper to the tip. Whereas the Warrior, halfway down, it starts to narrow. And it's slightly longer wingspan on these. So you've got third window, wider fuselage, no, sorry, wider horizontal, longer fuselage, third window, tapered wing. If it's a one, like this is a 151. This is a 235. So if it was a 236, it would be a Dakota, a Piper Dakota, a PA-28-236. But this is a 235 square wing. So a lot of numbers, just to recap, if there's a one after it, it's a tapered wing. So engines, let's start with the Warrior. We can actually look under its cowling. They're very easy to access. So 140s, 150s, 160s, 161s, all of them except the 235 and 236 have a four cylinder Lycoming. The Warriors are 150 horsepower Lycoming or 160 horsepower Lycoming. And it's not, um, it's not more cubic inches, it's more horsepower. 10 horsepower from the 160 to the 150 is compression ratio and pistons and various things like that. It's not cubic inches. So they're all O opposed 320s cubic inch. So O is opposed, 320 is the number of cubic inches. If this was an Archer or a 181, it would be an O360, not an O320. So same airframe, slightly different cowling. Cut. This is a Cherokee 235, but to the casual observer, this could very well be a Cherokee 180 as well, because it's got this Archer cowling on it. The sides don't open, the whole top comes off. We'll look at the engine. It's got this bulge over the top. It's fiberglass, the Warrior is metal. So what makes it at like distance visibility, looking at one, make it not be a Cherokee 180? The constant speed prop. So the 540, the, the, the Cherokee 180 is an 0360, opposed 360 cubic inch. The Cherokee 235, remember the number is horsepower, so this is an 0540, a six-cylinder 540 Lycoming in it with a constant speed prop. The exact same engine that's in a 182RG and a Piper Pawnee. But let's just take the cowling off. There it is, big. <clears throat> so this would be a, if it was just these two cylinders, it would be an 0360. Two more cylinders, 540. And weirdly, but not in these planes, two more cylinders, four. A flat eight would be a 720. That's what's in the Comanche 400 and the Queen Air. 
That's an enormous engine. The crankshaft is like 22 grand and it's about this long. So this is a carbureted 540 Lycoming with a 2000 hour TBO. Now, interestingly, if you stand and look right down, aim straight down the spine of the engine, the windshield center and the rudder, all in a dead straight line, and you'll see the engine is fairly significantly cast off to one side. When I first saw that, I thought, wow, who put this in? But actually that has to be like that because the amount of P factor, the torque, the twist of the engine in cruise would make it yaw. So they counteract it by positioning the engine like this because it's such a short couple plane with such a big engine. And this plane was built in response to Cessna's success with the 182. So Piper got a Cherokee 180, stuffed a 540 in it, put a constant speed prop on it. These planes have a useful load like 1,400 pounds. It's almost the weight they weigh empty. So they're incredible load haulers. So if you live in a hot, high, heavy um, Colorado, New Mexico, and you want a Cherokee, fixed gear, easy maintenance, easy ownership, but you want it to have some performance, you get a 235. Now 235s, aren't all constant speed some of them they were built from like 63 to 65 as fixed pitches so you'll get a 540 fixed pitch a fixed gear fixed pitch but over 200 horsepower which is those are the early planes there's a few other things about the early planes so we'll just go around to the control surfaces and point out some of those differences so control surfaces on this warrior remember this will be the same as a dakota the same as an archer piper have these indents in the in the flaps and ailerons um, if this plane it can't be because it's a warrior but if this was a Cherokee 140 or 160 and it had the Hershey bar wing the bumps on the control surfaces and the vertical fin and rudder and horizontal are all in the bumps are in dented down on the 65 and olders they're dented up a tit bit of information in 65 during the transition some of them are in and some of them are out, but in 66, they're all in. So there's a change over there. I once had a plane, it was a 64 and it had some in, it had out dents on its tail here and in dents on its rudder, but there was no damage in the log books, but that rudder had been changed because it had a later rudder because they were in. So this is all in because it's a warrior, but 65 and older, they're all out. Now this, another thing is from there too, you can see the taper of the wing. This aileron is flat skinned. Some warriors you'll see flat skins and some you'll see these indents. If it's flat skinned, it's got the automatic aileron, um, the automatic aileron centering. So it's like for flight training, it'll automatically center. That was an option on warriors. Flat skin is automatic, ribbed aileron like this is normal, like there's one over there. So this is the 235 wing. You can see it's square, Hershey bar with indents, so it's post 65, it's a 71, and here's its aileron, just square, rectangular aileron with the same flutes, it stays where it is. Slightly shorter wing. The only, this wing is, even though um, a Cherokee 180 and a 235 are the same wing, the, the 235 is slightly longer, simply because it's got a wingtip tank. Because these planes hold 84 gallons of gas. The Cherokee 180 holds 50, so there's 17 in each tip, and instead of just being a plastic wingtip, it's a fiberglass wing tank. So it extends the wing by another foot and a half. So the wing is longer on a 235 than on a Cherokee 180, even though it's the same wing from here that way. So the 17 there, 25 there, the other side the same. So you've got 84 gallons. And the fuel selector is very simple. There's four gauges and four positions. Choose your position, burn it out of that tank. Whereas in all the other planes, it's two tanks, two positions, 50 gallons. Square winged Hershey bar planes have the, uh, the tail is this wide. So here's me just sort of crudely measuring it. I can easily reach both sides of it. Once you get to the tapered wing plane, which would be a Dakota in this case, the Warrior, which is what this is, and the, and the Archer, they're wider. You see this, this rivet line here? That's where the old tail ended with its cap on and now this I can barely reach both ends of it it's much wider so there's much more authority it's like what's that like 18 inches times two three feet it's much much wider tail so all warriors all Dakotas all archers have the wider tail and Senecas strangely with indents there's no such thing as an outdented wide tail because that would be pre-65 and they didn't make warriors then 
Okay, so there is a transition period in the early 70s, like 72, 73, when a Cherokee 180 became an Archer and a 235 like this became a 236, a Dakota. And they got their tapered wings and stretched fuselages, but they didn't get them all in one year. So the transition planes are the short fuselaged Cherokees with the tapered wing on. And there's like 72, 73. The, uh, the, the, the uh, Cherokee 180 Archer hybrid, if you like, is called a Challenger. And the Dakota equivalent of it is called a Pathfinder or the other way around. But you'll see some people referring to them as Challengers and Pathfinders. That's a very unique year with a crossover between which was which at the time. The other thing is Cherokee 180s, which this looks exactly like a Cherokee 180, even though it's a 235, they get the throttle quadrant. And I always call it the archer panel, or the arrow panel. But the early 235s and the early Cherokee 180s and 140s had um, push-pull knob, mixture over here, prop control if it was a constant speed, just scattered, a bit like a Cessna knobs. Whereas these now have the throttle quadrant, so we can go and look inside. Okay. So this is the latest style panel with the throttle quadrant. You've got the throttle, prop, mixture, it's the Archer layout, or it's, you know, they're all the same. It's just not a throttle knob here with a mixture over here and a prop control on a knob. It's got this, like, little bezel in it. So 68 and newer Cherokee 180s have this. Uh, the 235s of the same year. All Archers, all Dakotas, all Warriors have this. All Arrows have this. And it's just very conventional. You've got mouthful pressure and tack, IFR configured 8 cluster radios. And then the fuel system on this plane, because it's a 235, left tip, left main, right main, right tip. Four gauges, four fuel positions. So you literally show tip, main, main, tip, and then you press this button down, off. So you just choose the tank you're on. And inside, it's exactly, even though this is a 540 pad, constant speed prop, 235 horsepower, Cherokee 235, 182 competitor, manual flaps, very, very similar inside to, um, say, an arrow would look just like this. A warrior or an archer would have no prop control. So you just have the throttle and prop. Same size fuse large, same lengths. They just vary their engines and their wing configurations. Cherokee 140s, of which I don't have one here, do not have baggage doors. Archers, Warriors, 235s, Dakotas, Cherokee 180s, they do. And normally, if there isn't a baggage door, there isn't a window. So they have this baggage. This one, because it's a 235, has a 200 pound baggage area. Useful load on this is 1,400 pounds. These are very useful. They're, they are Piper's answer to the 182, and they were good at it. So they have that baggage door that a 140 does not Wheel have. Wheel pants, they varied a little bit too, like with the Cessna range. This is obviously a 70, uh, 75 Warrior. Those are the wheel pants that are on it. They look similar to any other pipe of pants. Yeah, they're separate from the fairing, pant, gear leg. So look at that, and they will cut to another type. So this is a Warrior 2, 161, so tapered wing, long fuselage. Uh, that's the latest style wheel pan, just a quick look at the differences. It's one piece, it fears up and down, it covers the gear leg. So that's what's standard on a Warrior 2. And the Cherokee 235 over there is the same as on that earlier plane. Just two different kinds of wheel pants. And the nose wheel too, it doesn't have the fin on the back. It doesn't have that little that the other plane has. So performance. Um, Cherokee 140s with the little 150 horse in them, they do about 95, 100 knots. They're kind of a four-seater, some were two-seaters, but they're really only a good two-seater. They're a good trainer. Um, the Cherokee 180 with the 360 in it, that does about 120 knots, and it's an honest four-place plane, fixed pitch, useful load of like 950 pounds. The Cherokee 140's useful load is like 700 pounds. The 235, they do about 135 knots, very much a 182 performance envelope, useful load of like 1,400 pounds. And if you think very approximately, every two cylinders on a Lycoming is roughly five gallons of gas. So if there was a two cylinder, it'd be five. If there's a four cylinder, it's 10. If there's a six cylinder, it's 15. But in cruise and leaned, it's probably gonna be burning like 13 or 14 gallons an hour. So bigger useful load, higher speed, higher performance. This plane will sustain a climb of a thousand feet per minute and yet it's just a little Cherokee. These are great. They didn't make enough of them. 
If they'd got on it sooner and carried on longer, they would have been in direct competition with the 182. But the 182 with the high wing and the two doors and the big cabin, there's a lot of appeal to that. But if you learned in a Piper, you can work your way up through Pipers, and this would be the, you know, the family sedan. And the Warrior, all of them, pretty much the same, 150, 160. Um, this is the 150 horse, as I've said. Uh, these do about 105, 108 knots, very much like a 172. So same engine, same cruise, same fuel burn, same useful load. So these are more aimed at the, 180, the 172 training market, whereas the 235s is aimed more at the family 182 type of cross-country market. So I did another video on uh, Piper Lance, the one where I said Lance, Lance, Saratoga, Cherokee 6, those are the PA32s. So when the, they're similar, they're square winged, so the, the Lance is square wing, Hershey bar, the Cherokee 6 is, but the Saratoga and the, uh, its variations, fixed gears, constant speeds, turbos, they're all PA32s, but the square wing ones, just like on these, if it's 300, it's a square wing, if it's 301, the one means tapered wing. So a Saratoga is a PA32 301T. Or, and so the, and the, the Lance, or the older Cherokee 6s, they are PA32 300, no one. And there's no such thing as a 260 Cherokee 6. There's no 261, but it would be. It would have a tapered wing. So you just add that one, and you've got the tapered wing. So this is Mark at Skywagons University, um, ending another video on some of the differences between some of the different types of a kind of plane. This was Pipers. Um, subscribe on the little button down below, and there's a bell, which will give you notifications. And then remember to, if you've got an interesting plane that you'd like me to interview with and talk about, bring it here, call us, and we'll do a video on it. Thanks for watching. Thank you.